Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zagaris. And I would like also to thank the organizers of this important meeting. And uh, a special thank to my uh, friend, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Tamam Yang. So um, uh, I will share my screen now. So in this talk, I will um, I will focus on um, the impact of uh, uh, Syrian war on childhood cancer care. So these are the outlines of my talk. I will have a bit of introduction about the Syrian war, then the impact of Syrian war on childhood cancer care. Then I will go to have um, uh, to address the capacity building efforts in Damascus after twenty eighteen. So first of all, uh, Syria is a beautiful country in the heart of the Middle East. Uh, it's rich in culture and history. Our population is around 18 million and our GDP per capita is around $1,200. We are considered now as a low income country as per uh, World Bank. So this is Damascus overnight. And as I have mentioned, we are rich in uh, culture. Uh, so this is a brief uh, a briefing about the Syrian conflict. So before 2011, um, we were considered a low-income country in the Middle East with all uh, the uh, challenges related to healthcare and uh, other uh, uh, issues uh, in addition to healthcare. Now, in 2011, a major political and armed conflict erupted in our country, and it affected all cities from east to west and from north to south. And this resulted in a death toll of around $300,000 as per WHO. And this also resulted in a major immigration wave to countries and to Europe. Uh, the infrastructure of Syria was affected in all aspects. And also our economy uh, was affected and is still affected where uh, we need uh, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, to rebuild our country. Now, in 2011, the armed conflict stopped in most cities, except in uh, the north and in the east, uh, the east of, the, uh, of Syria. However, the economic crisis intensified, and um, we had the COVID-19 to, uh, to complicate the, the, uh, the scene. And we have also, a few months ago, the earthquake that affected the multiple cities in the country uh, in the north. Now, what about childhood cancer care in Syria? Uh, 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 before 2006, the childhood cancer care uh, was focused only in a single university-based uh, hospital in Damascus, uh, where, uh, as you know, all, all of us uh, know that uh, we have major issues in low-income countries related to uh, the workforce, related to the um, uh, finances of uh, cancer care, etc. Now, in 2006, there was a major uh, development in, in cancer care, in childhood cancer care in Syria, where Basma Association was established. Basma, in Arabic, it means smile. It was established to support children and their, uh, with cancer and their families. The initial uh, step was uh, to support them with medications, with housing, and with food. And uh, we have like uh, a psychosocial support program at that time. However, in 2009, uh, uh, our NGO uh, recognized that uh, supporting patients by medications, by housing and food might not lead to significant improvement and survival of these patients. So um, we established uh, a dedicated, uh, which, which was the first dedicated uh, pediatric oncology unit uh, in the country. Uh, the, uh, the NGO uh, recruited staff and uh, had uh, done uh, training for these staff. However, just two years after the establishment of this unit, the conflict erupted. So what was the impact of Syrian war on uh, childhood cancer care? I will start by patient care. So in Saib 2019, we have addressed uh, the, uh, the impact of uh, the conflict on uh, patient care. And uh, here we studied uh, two, uh, two issues. The first one is the... Uh, 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 new enrollments per month in our unit in different crisis period. And the second one is the loss to follow up rate in different crisis period. So we have di divided the periods in two period one from 2011 to 2018 and period, uh, period one, uh, sorry, and period 
to is from 2018 until the end of 2019, which is after the major crisis. Uh, 1,000, almost 1,000 patients, uh, we reviewed the, their files uh, between 2009 and 2019. So here you can see that uh, the enrollment of patients in our dedicated pediatric oncology unit, which is near Damascus, the capital of Syria, uh, was significantly less during the, uh, the major uh, conflict uh, period uh, which the, the average number of new cases per month was, was around eight, where after uh, the major crisis have ended, the, the number increased to 16, which is almost doubled with a significant p-value. Uh, so I, I think this is uh, mainly related to many things, including uh, difficulty in transportation uh, from different cities uh, of the country to uh, to, uh, to Damascus. And in, in, in addition to that, like during the war, during uh, the uh, armed uh, conflict, uh, probably healthcare and, ch and cancer care is not a major concern for families uh, who have their uh, kids with suspected or concerned or confirmed uh, cancer. Uh, for loss to follow up rate at our unit, so in period one, it was around 5%. In period two, it was 1.8%. This, this was not statistically significant, but there was a major trend toward uh, more loss to follow up rate during uh, the most intensive uh, crisis period. And this is also related to the same thing that after the patient finishes the treatment, uh, they don't maybe uh, the the uh, they don't have a major need to come back for follow up because of the armed conflict around the, around our unit. Now, what about the impact of workforce on uh, childhood care on, uh, uh, on serial war on workforce of uh, pediatric oncology? So this graph shows uh, what is the number of our physicians and nurses since the est establishment of the unit until 2020. And here you can see that there was a gap here uh, between 2015 and 2018, where uh, the um, so the conflict started in multiple cities, but our, our unit is located near Damascus. The armed conflict uh, close to our unit was most intensified in these three years. So you can see that we lost around uh, uh, 30 to 40% of our nurses and more than 60% of our physicians. And in 2017, there was only three physicians uh, taking care of our uh, patients. Uh, of, which is uh, in a, a major uh, pediatric oncology unit, which is really little uh, compared to the needs. So what about the impact of war on, on infrastructure of uh, pediatric oncology? So our unit is located at the fire borderline between Damascus and Damascus suburb. And between 2014 and 2017, there was major sniper shots and pumping around the unit. Um, which is related to the armed conflict. So uh, we, uh, our unit did not move until early 2018, where we had to move our unit for around six months to a safer place in Damascus. We moved to a public hospital, which is dedicated to cardiovascular uh, cardiovascular surgery because uh, there the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the area was really uh, significantly affected by war. We never closed our door to patients and families. So the enrollment was still open all over uh, this, uh, this period of uh, conflict. You can see here, this is a snap. Uh, this is a picture from uh, an area around our unit. And I, I want to address uh, here a, a very important thing that the impact of war. So Syria is not the only uh, uh, Middle East, uh, the Mediterranean um, country affected by war. We have Yemen, we have Palestine, we have Iraq. And in the last poem uh, scientific meeting in Oman a few months ago, uh, the same issues uh, that we have faced during war was also faced by um, uh, by pediatric oncologists in Iraq, in Baghdad, uh, in Yemen, in Sana'a, and in Palestine. Uh, the same issues related to the uh, impact of infrastructure and workforce. I, I want also to address something related to finances of, of, uh, of uh, pediatric oncology and the, fu the fundraising. So here I have uh, shown uh, uh, um, um, the, a graph 
what is the operational cost of our unit since establishment uh, since establishment until 2019 and you can see here a decreased uh, operational cost and this is mainly related to the decreased number of of patients enrolled in our unit and and i, I can tell you something that um, every new patient uh, enrolled in our unit uh, costs around $2,000 for the whole treatment cost and uh, follow-up. Uh, and here, um, uh, this was uh, shown uh, since establishment until 2019. And last year, I don't have like official number, but our operational cost with around 400 new uh, patients uh, enrolled, it, it was around $8,100. Now, what about the capacity building efforts in Damascus after 2018? I can address this. So Basma has, uh, uh, so I have received my training in Lebanon at the American University of Beirut through a San Jude sponsored the training program there. And in April 2018, Basma uh, NGO um, like contacted me to uh, and hired me to lead the capacity building effort in Damascus uh, after the end of war in Damascus. So in Damascus in April 2018, there was a deal and uh, the war uh, ended uh, at that time. So I was back home in, in that, at that period. So here I, I, I showed the number of pediatric oncologists in our unit. Uh, since the establishment until now, and you can see that uh, in 2011 there was only one, and over like three uh, three years there was no pediatric oncologist in our unit, and uh, there was uh, a, pedi a pediatrician and an adult oncologist taking care of the patients. Then in 2016 until 2018 there was one pediatric oncologist, and after that we started the capacity building. Uh, in 2022, we had five pediatric oncologists, but we uh, one of them uh, had uh, left uh, our unit um, uh, to uh, to another uh, country. So what uh, what was the impact on infrastructure? So here uh, I, I show the number of uh, inpatient uh, beds, outpatient chemotherapy chairs, and intensive care units in our. Uh, in our pediatric oncology unit uh, in Syria. In 2009, we have only 12 inpatient uh, beds and six outpatient beds without intensive care beds. Now, in uh, here you can see between 2017 and 2018, the number of beds decreased to 12 when we moved our unit to a safer place in Damascus. And then um, we had our first expansion, which was in March 2022, we doubled our uh, inpatient and outpatient beds just two years after the end of war to be able to accommodate more number of patients. So we went up to 36 inpatient beds, 12 outpatient and zero intensive care. Now, uh, over the past two years, we managed to open uh, a, a dedicated pediatric oncology critical care unit uh, with uh, the capacity of three beds. And this year, um, probably in February 2024, we will be able to open our sec second expansion, which will be 67 uh, inpatient beds, 12 outpatient chemo chairs, and six uh, 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 intensive care uh, beds. In this, in this expansion, we will be able to accommodate around 80% of Syrian children with uh, diagnosed with cancer, which is around 800 new cases per year. This is a, an image of our uh, reception area. So what was the impact of patient care? Uh, um, uh, this is a graph showing the number of new patients enrolled in our unit. And here you can see that after expansion in 2020, the number of new patients doubled from around 200 to around uh, 400 in 2021. And over the past two years, we have like uh, almost 400 new cases per, uh, uh, per year. Um, I, I will talk here about the outcome of uh, pa these uh, patients, the treatment outcomes, not only the number of new cases per year. And here we have analyzed the overall survival uh, rate for patients treated at our unit uh, in 2018-2019, like over a period of 18 months. The total number of patients was around 324. Um, we excluded nine diagnosed with benign diseases and 12 were transferred to another uh, hospitals. Uh, a rate uh, of the treatment abandonment rate was around 3%. And uh, we had 293 uh, patients eligible for survival analysis. The average duration of follow-up was 42 months. So the overall survival for all patients was 76% with a confidence interval of 72 to 81. 
And here I addressed the outcome of um, six diseases, which were the focus of the WHO Global Initiative on Childhood Cancer. For ALL, the, out, the overall survival was around 82%, Burkitt's lymphoma 84, Hodgkin's lymphoma 96, retinoblastoma 93, low-grade glioma 80%, and for Wilms tumor, the, it was like uh, as low as 66%. And I think this is due to the unavailability of um, a, a dedicated pediatric oncology uh, surgeon uh, in our unit, we refer patients to other hospital, and the major um, relapse rate and the cause of death for these patients is local relapse. Uh, this is the five-year overall survival estimate for patients diagnosed with the six WHO-focused diseases, which is 84%. So I, I, here I added also two things to um, to the impact of patient care. I think COVID nineteen when when uh, when it started in twenty twenty, uh, it also affected um, uh, it complicated the scene and affected our families uh, and the children. And uh, in this uh, paper, which we published a few months ago, uh, we 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 studied the psychosocial impact of the COVID nineteen on the families of children with cancer in our country. And in this uh, paper, we we have seen a more intensified uh, uh, anxiety in the families of our patients. And we think this is related to the accumulated, uh, uh, to the accumulated anxiety from war, from the financial situation after war. And uh, there was a, a standard uh, corona anxiety scale. And the average for our patients was significantly more than, uh, for, our, for the uh, parents of our patients, significantly more than the general population in uh, other countries, um, in other countries. Uh, with a major anxiety, diagnosed in 20% of uh, families. In addition to that, the, the COVID-19 had an, a significant impact on uh, finances of our families, which with increased out-of-pocket um, ex uh, uh, expenses in 80% of the families. What about the impact of earthquake, which was a few months ago? Actually, our uh, unit did not, uh, uh, was not, affected directly by the uh, earthquake because it was really far, a few hundred kilometers. But we, we noticed an increased referral rate from the affected cities in the north. But the there was major impact on cancer care in general. And uh, uh, in the northern uh, city, the infrastructure was affected and the infrastructure in nearby count in, in nearby country in Turkey was also affected, and this affected displaced uh, children uh, and adults to uh, Turkey with uh, cancer. So uh, uh, now Sanjud is running a post impact analysis both in Syria and Turkey. What about our regional and global collaboration? Uh, uh, so we are not isolated from the world. We we participate in all scientific, almost all scientific meetings in pediatric oncology. Also, our nurses were featured in London Global Cancer Week in 2021 through this documentary uh, movie. We were part of the WHO Global Initiative on Childhood Cancer since its, uh, uh, its establishment in Geneva in 2018. We are part of San Global Alliance since 2020. I want to address a major, uh, a very important thing. What is the impact of joining Sanjud Global Alliance on our capacity building efforts after war in Syria? First, uh, I, I address them in three categories. For education, we have in-person and virtual training for our staff in the following fields, in palliative care, in retinoblastoma, in neuro-oncology, and critical care. And um, uh, we have multiple quality improvement initiatives. First, we have now a running and an active pathology capacity building uh, training program with uh, Lebanon, which, which is sponsored financially by Sanjud. Also, we are uh, now implementing uh, a hospital-based data registry also uh, provided by St. Jude. And we have, uh, we're, we're enrolled in Profile, which is also an assessment tool provided by uh, St. Jude for our, uh, to have a multidisciplinary assessment for our unit. Now we have also direct financial support, support from St. Jude after the 2023 earthquake uh, to address our increased uh, referral rate for, from the northern part of the country. So as conclusion, the Syrian war has significantly affected childhood cancer care in our country. Uh, we have decreased enrollment rate and higher loss to follow up rate uh, during the most intensive period of crisis. We have shortage of staff and workforce during this period. However, capacity building efforts started in, two, in 2018 by an NGO. These efforts lead to rebuild the only dedicated pediatric oncology unit in the country. And the plan is to make this unit one of the largest worldwide and to provide quality care for all Syrian uh, children with cancer. Thank you.